Welcome back to This Is A Commander channel, where this is a Commander channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander Tough Rules and Cool Interactions, episode 151. Today's episode is going to take a look at one of my personal favorite commanders, but more specifically, we'll be looking at copy effects and copyable values, and what gets copied in some specific situations. The commander that I'm going to be using as the example in this episode is Urza, Prince of Krug, but you could easily apply this topic of today in decks run by Mishra's Eminent One, Orvar the All Form, Sahili the Sun's Brilliance, or any number of other creatures that are making token copies of things. Fans of bonus questions, I've got one at the end of this video for you, so let's get right into it. The trick with the deck is that it's a toolbox deck. You run a whole bunch of artifacts with solid ETVs, and you use Urza's activated ability to make tokens of them getting multiple uses out of their ETVs, and then building up an army of artifact soldiers that he buffs and attack your opponents. The cool thing, and the tricky thing, is when you play cards like Phyrexian Metamorph and Sculpting Steel, which are clone-type effects, there's a lot of other ones, that enter as another artifact, or in the case of the Metamorph, could enter as a creature or artifact on the field. And then it gains the artifact type in addition to its other types. So these are really great because the Urza can only make token copies of artifacts that you control. So what happens when my opponent controls a Solemn Simulacrum that I would also like to have? Well, I'll just have one of these clones come in as a copy of it, and now I can create an army of Simulacrums that ramp out my basics and maybe even draw me cards when they die. So the cool thing to do, though, is to have these clone type things actually enter as a copy of nothing. That is possible. Uh, when we read them closely, clo uh, you know, let's uh, take an example, the Metamorph. It says that you may have Phyrexian Metamorph enter as a copy of, and so on and so forth. So of course, if you normally did this, it would be a zero toughness creature and die due to state-based actions. However, with Urza out on the battlefield, he buffs the Metamorph to have at least the two toughness, so it's a risky play, but I also run in my deck a lot of other anthems uh, in, as a backup. So, of course, you don't need to worry about that as much with the Sculpting Steel, with it not needing to uh, have zero or more toughness. Uh, anyhow, why would you want to do this? What is to be gained by such a strange play? Why would you have them come in as a copy of nothing? The ability on Urza sets the characteristics of the token copy that it makes. It overrides the power and toughness of the original, uh, if it was a creature, to be a 1-1. And if it's not a creature, it also adds the creature type and the soldier subtype in addition to any of its other types that the original has. So if I have my Phyrexian Metamorph enter as a copy of your Solemn Simulacrum, then when I use my Urza's ability to make a token copy of it, it will be making a 1-1 Solemn Simulacrum that is an Artifact Creature Soldier that has those two triggered abilities on it. It will even retain the mana cost of 4 Generic Mana. However, if I were to have my Metamorph enter as a copy of nothing, then when I use my Urza's ability targeting it, it will enter as a 1-1 Soldier version of a normal Phyrexian Metamorph that has that replacement effect on it that replaces what it enters the battlefield as. So now I can have it replace for how it would enter to be that Solemn Simulacrum that my opponent controls. But instead of it being a 1-1 Soldier version of Solemn Simulacrum, it is just an actual copy of Solemn Simulacrum that is a 2-2 artifact creature golem. So you might be thinking, well, that's a whole lot of extra work just to get a slightly larger creature, a 2-2 instead of a 1-1, and to avoid having the soldier type. But that's not the real reason for jumping through all these extra loops. That's not the reason I do all this. I did this to get a Solemn Simulacrum this time, but what if later my opponent plays a better artifact or a better creature? What if they on their turn play a Moonshaker Cavalry to try and kill me with a massive flying board of creatures? 
Well now, I can wait for them to attack me with what they think is an unblockable and lethal swing, but then after attacks are declared and before blockers are declared, I can now use my Urza ability to make a token copy targeting my metamorph, but I can once again choose the artifact or creature that this metaphor, uh, metaphor, metamorph token will enter as. I can pick anything new for its replacement effect for how it enters the battlefield. I'm not bound to be picking that Solemn Simulacrum again. So if I choose for it to enter as the Moonshaker Cavalry, it'll not only be buffing my whole board with that ETB uh, effect, but it'll also be giving them flying. So now they can block all of the flying attackers that my opponent is sending my way. And that's what I love about these clone type effects. They let you use your whole deck as the tools that uh, you have built into it, but now you can pick and choose from all the tools that your opponents have on the battlefield, all their creatures and all their artifacts. And again, the Metamorph's replacement effect overrides the characteristics set by the Urza ability. So in this case, the Moonshakel Cavalry will be an artifact spirit knight creature that is a 6-6 flyer, not a 1-1, which means after its own end of turn buff wears off, it'll be an 8-8 flyer due to the Anthem effect on Urza. It's a 6-6 plus his 2-2 that he's giving it. And this can really help you to seal the fates of your opponents. Now, you can read more about all of this crazy copy and copyable values shenanigans in more detail in the comprehensive rules under sections CR 613.2, 707.2, and also 707.3. And then here is your bonus question. If you control Urza, Prince of Krug, as well as Mirage Mirror, which is an artifact that says for two generic mana, Mirage Mirror becomes a copy of target artifact, creature, enchantment, or land until end of turn, you then use your mirror to become a copy of your opponent's Solemn Simulacrum until end of turn. If you were to use your Urza's ability to become a copy of that mirror version of the Simulacrum, what will happen to the token that Urza made once we get to the cleanup and the end of turn effect has run its course? The original mirror will go back to being just a, a normal mirror, but what will the, ter the token that Urza made be? Will it continue to be a 1-1 soldier version of the Simulacrum? Or will it turn into a 1-1 soldier version of the mirror? Or will it just go back to being a normal version of the mirror with no creature type or subtype? Anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. As always, I hope that all of you have found this video to be entertaining at least. And I hope that a few of you have even learned something about the crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta. And bonus tech for anyone who's still watching, uh, there's a really cool trick that you can do with the uh, Mirage Mirror. When you activate it, the thing that it becomes uh, doesn't retain that ability to be able to become a copy of something else. But being an activated ability, you can activate it multiple times, holding priority each time, and have it target a different object each time. And then you can start to let those activated abilities resolve one at a time. You've built up a whole bunch of them, so you're letting one of them resolve. But in between each of those resolving, you hold priority each time and you use your Urza's ability to make a token copy of it. So this way you can get a whole bunch of different artifacts from your opponents for yourself. Does this cost a whole lot of mana to pull off? For sure. Uh, but that's what happens when you're using the Krugster to make a bunch of, I don't know, Power Stone shards that uh, care about how many named things there are of Power Stone shard on the field, or Metal Worker is also a really, really good one. You can have an insane amount of mana to work with. Okay, uh, enough gushing about this deck. I love this deck. It's one of my favorites, probably in my top three favorite decks that I have. I have like 40 plus decks. Uh, so maybe one day I'll make a full video of why this deck is so amazingly fun, but for now, ta-ta.